Hello, everyone. I'm Rob, Rob Kenworthy, CEO and uh, founder of GT Maritime. And I started the company over 20 years ago to help shipping companies take control of their vessels' communications. We began um, with optimized email to combat the high costs and the low efficiencies of SATCOMs. And we've advanced with our customers to secure data comms, um, so we help secure and protect the ships from potential threats. We're a growing company. We've got over 5,000 vessels and a global presence, uh, headquarters in the UK, uh, with an office in Singapore. We've just opened an office in Houston, and we have a presence in Holland, and we have a presence here in Athens with George Zervos. And it's a global threat, and it needs a global focus. Today, I'm going to try and give you some unique insights and context that we have on the data that's being sent to and from our vessels, emphasizing how important cybersecurity and cyber awareness is and how we do everything we can on our side to ensure your vessels are protected. So the maritime industry as a whole is, is seeing ever-increasing uh, data volumes. We hear it all the time with people talking about big data and IoT, and of course we talked earlier on the autonomous vessel. Um, one of our small fleets uses um, nearly a 100 gigabytes of data every month, for example. And ships now have, uh, they've got Wi-Fi, WiMAX, v VSAT, FX, 4G, 5G, and all sorts of connectivity. For the average vessel these days, they're seeing increased data plans and the need to be in almost constant contact with the shore. This means that networks are liberated. It's no longer um, uh, the captain and the chief engineer that have access to communications. That was my days when I was at sea. But the ability for more people to connect to and from vessels, there's also comes the opportunity for those that you do not want to connect. The threat landscape is constantly evolving, and um, we need to stay on the crest of the wave. Well, uh, we've, we've covered MESC. Uh, all, all I can add uh, about MESC is that uh, Andy Jones, who was the C CISO there at MESC, said that they lost 300 million in 17 minutes. That's, that's um, daunting. So what ways can a vessel be exploited? The short answer in, 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 in is the same way as any other office or, or home network. Things like infected USB sticks, uh, poor vessel security, uh, network security, and of course email, which is where we come in. The maritime industry sustains 90% of global transportation, uh, and, and now they're more and more connected. Email is the easiest way for bad actors to target a vessel and disrupt that flow of transportation or gain a ransom opportunity. With email, it's not just the legacy networks that are exposed, but they prey on the vulnerable, untrained crew. Yeah, vessels are connected, but they're remote and isolated, making them prime targets for the potential cyber criminals. And the crew on board are trained to operate a vessel they're not C IT cyber experts. So every, if something goes wrong, it can prove a logistical nightmare if communications are down. With the lifespan of vessels being so long, uh, there's often legacy or original equipment on board running out of date software. That's then interacting with the updated communications equipment. And if it's an always on style connection, then everything's connected all the time. This is common in the industry today, where vessels need to have up-to-date information and have regular, if not constant, ability to <laughs> connect to the shore. And then, of course, on board these vessels, they hold sensitive information, not just about themselves, but about the voyage and their office, but also about third-party suppliers um, they are connected with, again, making them an area of interest for the cyber criminals. The stats. The stats show that vessels are at risk and are in line of fire. These statistics uh, are from the 2018 Cyber Security Survey conducted by Fairplay, BIMCO, and ABS Advanced Solution. 
We've all been through these kind of stats before, but nonetheless, they do highlight some important facts. Of the 350 individuals from across the maritime shipping sector, over 20% of respondents acknowledged they'd been the victim of an incident. And 72% of these said their own company was the victim of a cyber-related incident in the last 12 months. Of these, the most common forms of incident was phishing, which accounted for 49%, and malware, which is 44%. Well, yeah, okay, these are attacks we've all heard of and should be aware of by now, but what was the end result? Well, the end result was that 49% had service disruption and 44% had either system downtime, which is crazy to think that almost half of the attacks resulted in vessels having system downtime. What would that mean uh, or, or look like to any of the vessels that you work with now? And when we touched on the crew element before, the survey in a report from Future Nautics back in 19, uh, 2018, 43% um, of the crew have sailed on a vessel infected by malware, and only 15% of seafarers have received any form of cybersecurity training. So, that's the landscape we face today, and the cyber, cyber problem is real. But what unique offers, uh, what, what unique details can I offer you today? Let's look at the statistics that, uh, that we have. We, uh, we process data from over 5,000 vessels, averaging enormously in, in size, the type and geolocation. Uh, and we have some customers, 40 crew on board, and we have some with a slim skeleton crew. Some are in the top 10 largest shipping companies in the world, and some are small offshore vessels. But one thing we see across them all is they all face security threats on a daily basis. So as I've put up there, we're processing on a daily basis over 288,000 messages. <coughs> and over the last month, you calculate that up, that's 105,189,143 emails. Those 105 million emails pass through a rigorous network of our cybersecurity tools. Multi-layered protection was mentioned by the gentleman before me. And um, we're picking up hundreds of thousands of threats and stopping them getting through to our customers and vessels. There's over 5 million spam messages picked up and over 1.7 million known viruses using multiple different antivirus solutions. But here's a scary bit. We've stopped, click the button, we stopped over 85,000 malware attacks that were unknown to standard antivirus services. Now that was in the last year, 85,000. This means that around one in 20 of the emails are coming through as spam. Around one in 50 end up as known viruses. And sadly, one in a 1,000 emails of these undetectable malicious malware that takes, it takes a certain special deep content inspection tool that we call ATP to detect and safely destroy. Now, I mentioned earlier that we've done, we're doing 288,000 messages a day. So if it's one in a 1,000, we're stopping 288 malicious uh, malware messages on a daily basis. So now it's getting real. So it's important to train your staff um, because get them aware of the threats because um, these are quite frequent. But training is an absolute must. As a technology provider, we're doing our utmost to protect vessels and users from receiving threats. But this can only be part of the solution. It's great technology, but high levels of awareness need to work hand in hand so we can mitigate the cyber threats together. Let me show you something. This was a, a message that we stopped, ATP stopped, and it looks Pretty, pretty simple, nothing wrong with that. And this is what's hidden in the background. 
the AGP found this and, and stopped it going through. Now, the sad thing about this is the person that received this wouldn't have needed to do anything to it for him to be exploited by it. It would have just ran. It could have compromised his PC and then taken down the network. It only takes one email to get through. Not only are we stopping the, the known threats, we're also stopping the unknown threats, where the antivirus providers haven't built signatures for them yet. Think how difficult it is to recover when all the network PCs are down, especially over a remote satellite connection. So, this is the technology. Um, we're really proud of the level of protection that our solution delivers to our customers. GTML plus .atp, quite a mouthful really, was shortlisted as a nomination for the Safety for C Smart Technology Award 2019. We provide this solution to our vessels with zero downtime or administration for the customers and offered instant next level protection. ATP's deep content inspection is designed to provide complete visibility into advanced malware behavior whilst remaining hidden and completely emulate the system in an all-encompassing intelligent environment. It's behavior-based, so it can observe 100% of the actions that a malicious object might take, even when those actions are delegated to the operating system or other programs. And it detects the, uh, the, the zero-day exploits, unlike antivirus-based tools which require testing and analysis after inspection. Once it's found uh, a malicious uh, email, it'll automatically share the findings with global threat intelligence networks of all ATP partners. So, we have the statistics and what we as a service and solutions provider do to make sure our customers are receiving the best level of protection um, the three factors to always remember with cybersecurity are, as the gentleman said earlier on, multi-layered technology and software security. Your cybersecurity strategy is only as strong as your weakest link. <coughs> Processes. Make sure you have the right management and strategies in place. And the human factor. Invest in cyber training and cyber awareness so that your crew are not left vulnerable. There's so, there are so important, these are so important um, that, in my opinion, uh, cybersecurity should be added as an agenda point on the board level, at board level. Ultimately, there's no silver bullet, and a strategy of defense in depth should be adopted. Covering all these topics is the only sensible approach. Um, just as a sideline, we, um, we also have a pen test every six months. And no one's mentioned pen tests yet, but pen tests are useful. It's a bit like an MOT, um, the, whether an MOT checks your car and he comes back and says you need this fixing, you need that fixing. A pen test gives you a good idea as to whether anyone can get through to you. That's the end of that. Thank you very much indeed for listening, and we found the stats very interesting. I hope so.